we are going to speak regarding the revolutionizing of dental education what the technology is going to uh, change in our lives and so what we if we are ready or not to uh, afford this this kind of uh, this kind of changing but before deepening in our presentation i'd like just to spend a few words regarding from where we are from <laughs> sorry to do uh, yes yes press the pause please sorry there there is something wrong with the sound system. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I listen. I listen your voice double. Your voice double. Yeah, same, yeah here. same here. We can try again. A small region in Italy, which is in the central Italy, and it's called Abruzzo. It's faced uh, on the Adriatic Sea, and it's on the opposite side of Rome, as you can see from the map here. It's uh, among uh, the mountains and the sea, and it has a lot of small towns, which are one of the most small, uh, one of the most beautiful small towns uh, in Italy. And uh, we, it has a climate, actually a very good climate, because we can we can go swimming in 40 minutes. Uh, in uh, in in the sea, or we can go in in 10 minutes actually, or we can go swimming in 40 minutes in the mountain in in months like April or uh, or May, for example. And our university is located in this region. That that is very strategic for the for the students because it's very quiet and the criminality has a low rate. And it's located in two uh, in two cities. Um, uh, a campus is in Pescara, and the other is in Chieti. The biggest one is in Chieti, as you see here on the on the on the bottom of the slide, or uh, the other one in Pescara on the top of it. It has a campus in a, an American style, and it's unique in it in Italy for its kind because in Italy it's not used to have American styles campuses uh, where the students can can do not only teaching but it, it can do also other sports and during its free uh, its free time or uh, other activities that can change their lives. We came from the Department of Innovative Technologies in Medicine and Dentistry, which is a, a, um, a new department. It was born in November 2020, and it's composed by scientists belonging to the medical, dental, biological, biochemical, and physical sciences. And through the innovative, uh, through the latest innovative technologies, we are going to implement not only the, tra the teaching, but also the research activities in the medical, surgical, and uh, odontostomatological uh, fields. So we are going to give to, the pay to, to our students the possibility to have the latest technologies applied to the, to the dentistry where we are going for, of we are going to speak today. We have a lot of uh, professors, researchers, and uh, administrative uh, and technic technical staff within our, uh, our uh, department. But uh, we are going to speak regarding dentistry, uh, which is a um, qualifying degree. So it means that we are going, that we have, we should prepare our students to be qualified uh, the, the day after the uh, degree in dentistry, because they have to uh, to treat the patients so they have to be really very practical not or not only a theor a theoretical so we have to prepare them on 360 degrees well actually the dentistry in italy uh, nowadays lasts six years and uh, it, it the student has to to uh, to do like 360 uh, uh, credits during the six years but what we have to offer to our uh, to our students, we have to offer not only a teaching of the ba basic sciences, but also the professional professionalizing teachings because they are going to be uh, dentists, so they are going to treat the mouth of the patients, and we can do it through uh, thanks to the the possibility to have a dental clinic within the campus of Kieti, where the students can go and. Uh, and follow uh, through internships or through different degrees, uh, different branches of dentistry, they can do their practical 
uh, within this uh, clinic on the patients, on the patients, not only on the on the fa phantom. Because today we we can use we we can use the the um, the the classes not only to perform. The, the, the theoretical uh, part, but also for the uh, practical uh, practical part. As you see in this uh, in this digital digitalized uh, classroom, we can help students to prepare their teeth, for example, on phantoms, not on not on patients, because they are going to do it on patients a little bit later when they have gained some uh, skills and some abilities to to work on the on the mouth of the patient on the mouth of the patients. And this is through the internships. But we are going to, to speak today regarding the uh, regarding two branches of dentistry, the, pro, uh, the prosthodontics and implantology. But what is uh, prosthodontics? What is a prosthetic, a prosthesis? What, what is it? Well, through uh, like the glossary of prosthodontics terms, the prosthesis is an artificial replacement of part of the human anatomy restoring form, function, and aesthetic. So we have to have ability to see which is the aesthetic of the patients, which is the function, and which is the form of uh, the, 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 the part of the body that we are going to replace. And in this case of the, uh, of the dental prosthesis, the part of the mouth that we are going to replace and of the teeth specifically. Today we we are going to uh, through this video we can see how we we prepare the teeth of the patients uh, to to host uh, a dental prosthesis, and we are going to base it on what we have been learned during what we have been teached uh, during the uh, during the classes in our degree, and uh, we know from a theoretical part that we have uh, to take uh, the, the bar along the long axis of the teeth and that the, the mesial and the distal uh, wall of the teeth, they should be parallel on, uh, on some kind of uh, four and six degrees and that the teeth should be parallel the one with the other, the, the adjacent teeth. But we, this is all theoretical and we are going to practice more and more to become a good practitioner. So it means that only who has who has uh, done a lot of uh, a lot of processes is going to to perform uh, the best processes, going to perform a correct processes, not the pay, not the student that is going to to be to to perform its first processes. But we want to give the possibility to our students that they should measure. The, the, the mistake that they are going to perform in, in, this, in, uh, in this kind. Actually, the, the evaluation of the processes of what the student have done is only on, um, is only on a, um, is only uh, visual because we are going to see which, uh, what have done the, 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 the student, but we are not going to measure it. And so we are not going to have a quantitative evaluation of the preparation that the, that the student have, have performed. The same we have uh, on the uh, implantology where the digital uh, technology has uh, even gone uh, a little bit faster and we have as we can see here we can put uh, we can insert an implant to replace the missing tooth even not only the coronal part not only the crown part so but also of the of the uh, of the root and uh, even in the implantology we have to respect some architectural uh, archi architectural Mm, uh, principles. For example, it, it should be parallel with the other teeth and also with the wall should be an adequate quantitative uh, tissue around the, the, around the implant. But in this case uh, that you see here, a, a, a single implant placement, it's really very simple to perform and it's not quite, quite difficult. But we can have some cases, more more difficult cases. For example, where we have an odontolist for one or for more than one more than one one teeth. For as in this case, the second quad, uh, the, the the second uh, part of the upper jaw is total uh, odontolism, uh, and so we can we 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 should we should prepare the students to afford also this kind of situations. This can be done also with the help of the of uh, 
uh, surgical guide, but it can, but in some cases, like in this one, for example, we cannot use the surgical guide at all, but it's only the expertise of the, of the, uh, of the operator that is going to place this implants in an adequate uh, way. So we have here, we, we should, we, we should absolutely use the digital techniques even in dentistry, in, in implantology, they are used nowadays, like, for example, the guided surgery. When we can plan our, our, the, the, uh, the insertion of our implants, we can uh, almost plan it on, uh, on, the, uh, on a computer, as we can see here, and we can uh, choose what kind of implants we're going to place, which are the dimensions, which is the position, which is the parallels between these implants, and so on. So we can have a planification of this case in a digital, in a virtual way, and then can print uh, dig, uh, a surgical guide and then put the uh, and then put or insert the implants on the mouth of the patients. For for example, in this case that have been performed from Jan Maria, we see a 84 uh, year old woman that have rehabilitated all the maxillary part with uh, a surgical uh, through a surgical guide and through the digital um, surgery but we have we 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 ask ourselves and said but is what we have planned uh, through the digital part is it going to be real at the mouth of the patient? Is it so, or maybe there may, may be some discrepancies between the planification and what we really uh, do on the mouth of the patient? So we have uh, performed this uh, this uh, experiment and that that have been uh, published on the Journal of Clinical Medicine, where we uh, evaluated the accuracy of DICOM, DICOM versus DICOM and STL protocols, and we we see on a, on a certain surgical uh, guided uh, on uh, um, through a guided surgery through a computer guided surgery and we we went to 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 see the implant position the neck uh, in, uh, the, the discrepancy at the neck at the apex on the depth deviation on the angular deviation and we and we show that there is a discrepancy between what we planned and what we are going what have been uh, done to the patient and it's measured like from one to two millimeters of discrepancy, and uh, uh, which depends on the cases. But the most important thing is that there is a discrepancy. It it depends on if we are on the upper or on the lower on the lower jaw. But what we are going to see to the patients uh, to the patients today, what we are going to give to the patients today is that. We are going to prepare them on uh, on some phantoms, as we see here, to reduce the teeth and to have the ability to work with a bar uh, um, outside the mouth of the patient first, and then in some phantoms, and then on the mouth of the patient. But as we see here, we can see if they they if they did it quite adequately, but we cannot measure if it's correct or not. So it's only visual if uh, we can if we can see and the professor is going to see the, pre the preparation if had been if it has been done correctly or not. So it's only visual this this evaluation and not quantitative and not quantitative one. But we have to give to our students the possibility that they have to measure at the same at the same point if they have done and which is the error that they have that they have done. Today, uh, actually, we know from uh, digital from a, dan uh, a clinical from. Um, evidence-based dentistry that we have a 10-year survival uh, rate of fixed bridges of 65%, but we have to, to increase it and to, be, to have a, a higher percentage and a, a long-term evaluation. But uh, today, what, what we gain with the conventional dentistry is uh, this, this percentage, 65%. But we also, uh, it has been uh, published in, uh, in literature, a very interesting paper, which is, which gives 90% uh, of dentists, they are prone to invest 
in techno technolo technological renewal. So it means that they are prone, they are ready to invest on uh, uh, technologies, on new technologies. And we, ha we have to reflect regarding this because it means that our students, they belong to a new generation. So they are really more prone uh, regarding uh, more prone on using new technologies. So we have to prepare the, the our students on new technologies, uh, on new technologies that today we can use, but even more important, we have to prepare them on the uh, new technologies that the future is going to give to us. But for this, it's going generally. It's going to speak more in in deep and more specifically what the OMG system is going to give to our students. Good morning, everyone. I am Gian Maria D'Addazio. I express gratitude to my colleague, Professor Bruna Signari, for her words. And following her excellent introduction, we will present information on the traditional techniques we utilize in dental education, particularly in teaching with students. We have already mentioned that our practical sessions currently take place using traditional techniques, thus demonstrating to the students what we are doing and asking them to replicate these procedures but as of today, there is a lack of objective methods to evaluate the quality of what the students do. I will now demonstrate an example of utilizing technology to evaluate the quality of impressions taken in dental education. This assessment is done using both analog and digital techniques by students. In short, let us explain what an impression is. It's the recording of the patient's dental arch done using a traditional technique as briefly shown in this video. This video is taken from a historical film that essentially provides us with information about the patient's dental arch, which is made with traditional techniques. This is a technique that is currently well established and also supported by a strong evidence base in literature, but it does have disadvantages, especially concerning patient comfort and the ability to work with colleagues from the other side of the world. On the other hand, what we see in this video is an impression taken with digital techniques that allows for capturing the patient's dental arch, a scan of the patient's mouth that provides us with a digital file, offering the advantage of making immediate corrections, digitally assessing the quality of the work, yet with the disadvantage of requiring an economic investment. In relation to our teaching methods, we carried out an initial study in which we requested the students enrolled in the dental degree program to take an impression, specifically an optical impression. As a result, all of the second year dental students, along with one of our teachers, took an impression using both traditional material and an optical impression on a volunteer subject. Subsequently, we compared the impressions captured during the process using engineering software digitally in order to evaluate the student's work objectively and ensure an unbiased assessment. What we did, therefore, was overlay these impressions to assess if there were any errors on the part of the students. It was observed that in the optical impression, there was an average error of 0.01 millimeter. And especially in this image, we can see how the error was still acceptable, mostly shown in green by the majority of operators, always compared to the impression taken by the professor. We performed the same procedure with the conventional impression, which was subsequently converted into digital format for error evaluation. This evaluation revealed an error of 0.03 milli three times greater than the previous error. This finding demonstrates that modern students have a greater inclination towards utilizing technology and that the errors they encounter in the digitally recorded impressions are significantly less severe. However, this data also enables us to assess over time the progression and learning abilities of students objectively, thereby allowing us to quantify their performance, let's say from an educational perspective, for example, in order to gain valuable insights. Now, I will give a brief presentation by showing a short video to demonstrate our invention, which we are introducing today, and explain how it is assisting us in teaching the students. I remember that one day as a child, my father came home with a large bag full of plaster teeth, 
shiny spatulas, and blocks of wax. I was extremely captivated by these objects, by these toys, by these shapes, by these adult things. They truly intrigued me. Well, I'm sure not everyone is fortunate enough to pinpoint exactly the moment when they realized what they wanted to do when they grew up. But I'm certain for me it was that day. This system that I briefly demonstrated in this video is indeed the subject of our invention, which is aimed at reducing and eliminating the manual error caused by the dentist. What occurs enables us to manage the patient's involuntary motions, possess excellent visibility, even in regions with restricted access, and achieve optimal working angles both during the placement of the implant and in the preparation of the teeth for the placement of the prosthesis. This was also employed during instruction, thanks to this sensor that functions as a real-time locator of the dental handpiece's position in relation to the patient's mouth, guiding the working axis moment by moment throughout the teaching process. Thanks to an extraoral sensor that connects to the dentist's handpiece, an intraoral sensor that connects to the patient's dental arch, and software that calibrates the patient's position relative to the operator, providing the dentist with real-time guidance thereby improving the accuracy of restorations and offering numerous benefits for the patient, including reduced working time and decreased intervention costs, making it a valuable tool in modern dentistry. With the aim of achieving autonomous guidance of the working axes during procedures, also utilizing augmented reality visor, this is what we do with the students, that is, we use this sensor to guide the students' working axes and objectively evaluate their performance as I show you in this extended video where we talk about the birth of our project and our spin-off. The OMG system spin-off, which was approved by the University of Gabriele D'Annunzio in Chieti and Pescara, undoubtedly signifies a noteworthy milestone, but it also marks a fresh beginning for a trajectory of technological advancement dedicated to enhancing dentistry with the objective of minimizing manual errors and streamlining dental procedures. At UMG, we have created a smart device that is capable of digitally guiding the dentist's work axis with the aim of reducing errors and simplifying manual procedures. I am Gianmaria D'Adazio, a dentist and junior researcher, and together with Professor Bruna Signari, both affiliated with the Department of Innovative Technologies and Dentistry Medicine at the University of Chieti, we are 50% partners in the UMG spin-off established in February. This is a project that has a long history. Under the guidance of the professor, we have collaborated for years on basic research projects, clinical research, and clinical assistance activities, and we have always questioned how to improve, how to enhance the manual procedures of the dentist. In fact, to date, Technological support in dentistry has greatly enhanced clinical practice, yet it has not bridged the gap in manual procedures, where technical scientific knowledge and extreme manual precision are crucial. To start, we conducted a literature review and identified a gap between scientific research and industry. To this day, no device on the market provides the ability to accurately determine the exact relative position between the dental handpiece and the position of the patient. The economic boost for the development of this project initially came from a research grant and later from a researcher contract promoted by Alditimo within the framework of the PON project. 
Within this project, a collaboration was established with the Abruzzo-based company Digisol, led by Giuseppe Di Giulio and specializing in automation and 3D systems. Thanks to this collaboration, we have reached the development of the device as we know it today. A device that consists of a pair of sensors, the first to be attached to the dental handpiece, compatible with all dental handpieces on the market, and the second inside the patient's oral cavity. These sensors communicate in real time thanks to proprietary software, allowing for a digital guide of the dentist's work axis. All of this translates into significant advantages in terms of economic and environmental sustainability, benefits for the patient and advantages for the dentist, as we are able to achieve productions at a lower cost, with faster production times, and with increased precision. Furthermore, the device is backward compatible with all handpieces, with all drills currently available on the market, thus allowing a reduction in expenses for purchasing the device. So this device has enabled us to transform our teaching with students, transitioning from working on manually prepared tooth models where the teacher can visually evaluate whether the student's work is accurate or not, and only visually verify if the amount of tooth removed is suitable, to utilizing our device for real-time monitoring of our work with multiple benefits because we can furnish students with precise preparation protocols, specifying angles to adhere to during preparations, checking in the software if this has been accomplished by students, monitoring the portion of tooth removed during preparations, and conducting a qualitative assessment of students' work and their progress over time. This has revolutionized our teaching approach and greatly enhanced the learning experience for our students, enabling them to receive immediate feedback, improve their skills, and track their own progress. In these images, we see the software analyses that we can perform to calculate the amount of tooth removed and thus the skills of the students. We have also employed this device in vivo for implant placement in a patient's mandible with the objective of enhancing the precision of our procedure, reducing time, simplifying the procedures, and thus enabling even inexperienced dentists or students to perform these procedures with greater ease and confidence. In these images, we see some of the data we are analyzing where we compared the preparations made by students manually or thanks to the use of the OMG system device. What we observe is indeed a statistically significant decrease in the quantity of extracted tooth, but most importantly, an enhancement in convergence angles. In conclusion, this device allows us to optimally guide the working axis, leading to an improvement in clinical practice, benefiting the dentist, but especially from an educational perspective, being able to provide clear protocols to students and monitor and control their work over time. Adjusting the working axis. In these images, we observe two of the national accolades we have received with our device, which is presently under potential internet coverage. I would like to thank Professor Brun Signari and the entire research group she leads. Thank you for your attention and for inviting you virtually to this conference and remind you that we are open to collaboration projects, courses, and training on our device, as well as on all the technologies currently available in Utopiatrics. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do, do you okay. have any question? Did you recognize anything, any difference between the first and second part? <laughs> Just a second, so I will bring you to microphone so they can hear you. Uh, the second part was not a real person. It yeah. was just AI. Yeah, exactly. Language choice and the style of speaking, and it was um, clear, <laughs> for me at least. Yeah, exactly. We wanted just to, to give the idea that the technologies are giving us a lot of chances uh, actually nowadays, so we have to prepare ourselves e even in this, not only our students.
Okay. There might not be any more questions, but are you willing to ask something from the audience here? No, I, I just wanted to actually the, the, the question I did, it was only a curiosity if they just recognize the differences between the real person and the nut. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I was so brilliant that you could uh, join us via internet connection. Thank you and to you we for are all having, the efforts. <laughs> yeah, and we are having a lovely time here in Romania. I wish you were here, but this was better than nothing, wasn't Unfortunately, it? Unfortunately, yeah, as uh, as we told you, we have two small babies. Uh, Gian Maria is waiting the, the second, second baby. One. The second one, so <laughs> his wife is uh, like at the hospital, so we couldn't be there with you today. Yeah, but thank you. Thank you. And we are about to finish in here as well and having a post bus tour in a the city then. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy, Bye-bye.